Hello fellow gamers, welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally I do board games, but something came up that really struck me as, well, pretty amazing. Today we're going to be doing a RPG review of not all of these. We're going to be doing an RPG review of The Border Kingdoms by Ed Greenwood and Alex Kammer. This came out uh, just a couple of, a few weeks ago, and I have the print-on-demand copy. Now you may ask yourself, Mike, what are you doing with the rest of these books? Well, we're going to do a little comparison here. So I have these different books so we can take a look at exactly how this all fits together. Okay, so stay tuned. And now a word from our sponsor. Sponsor. All right, guys. So let's start out here with this beautiful book that uh, I picked up, The Border Kingdoms. And I'm very excited about this book. I have a lot to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about is the actual book itself. This comes from the print on demand from the DMs Guild. And it looks great here on the outside. I love the artwork, I have to say that. It's great artwork. Um, there was a little, you know, for you purists, this came like this, a little dense here and there, which, no, should, shouldn't be the way. I guess all books have that. One form or another, if you look here at Salt Marsh, my copy of Salt Marsh just came from Amazon. You can see it's got a little blemish here and here as well, as well as that little, little tear right there. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about is construction. It's a fairly well-constructed book. Now, this is not threaded at all, okay? See, it's obviously, this is just glued. There is no threading at all that I can see. These are just glued to the board. So minor gripe, uh, of course, you know, these, this isn't 100% professional printing. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap right here. You can see how it was done. Uh, the paper in the back here is not completely aligned even. It's got a larger edge down here than it does up here. These are just minor gripes, but I wanted to point it out. And they said that this book was, uh, structure-wise, was, was uh, compatible to any of the Wizards of the Coast Dungeons and Dragons book. Well, yes and no. Now, it's not completely the same as the new ones. These newer ones here, you're going to have the more silkier feel to the pages on them. This, however, has the same similar, very similar paper to the earlier books, like Horde of the Dragon Queen. It has that more papery feel to it. As a matter of fact, this is probably exactly the same paper that was used, the same type of paper that was used. So I'll say that for it. Third thing, this book is a little bit larger. So if you're, uh, you got any, um, OCD about your shelves being even, well, this one's going to stick out, as you can see. It's also just a smidgen taller as well, as you can see here from the top. So they're not quite 100%. No, it's the same here, see, 100%. Now, like I said, this wasn't sewn, this was just glued. And I don't think any, I mean, I can see here, you can see the what looks to be some type of threading here or something here, probably just glue. But in the, to show the difference, here is the Call of Cthulhu books that Chaosium puts out. And you can clearly see the threads in here or where they sew, actually sew the pages uh, together. Okay. Now that we've talked about that, so now we're going to talk about this book. And you might say to yourself, Mike, are you reviewing the Border Kingdoms or Powers of Room? Well, you know, a little bit of both. A lot of one, a lot of the Border Kingdoms, a little bit of powers. Here's the thing. This is, besides the little blurbs that they did in the campaign setting, 
this book is the only one in uh, through first, second, and third edition that actually had a fairly decent write-up for the Border Kingdoms. And right back here. Also came with a map. Okay, so here's our first comparison to the Border Kingdoms and the write-up about the Border Kingdoms. And before we talk about the map, we're going to talk about the copy-paste. So basically, you have Chapter 1, The Border Kingdoms, and it has a little bit here, players interested in carving out their own kingdom of the realms can find no better place than The Border Kingdoms, where a wayfarer can, just, can find just about anything. Okay, so if you look here, we have a complete copy-paste from here, except for this small part where it says even before the spell play, because, of course, this is 5th edition. But you have a complete copy-paste. Just to let you know, if you're reading it and you say, oh, that sounds familiar. Well, it does, because it's a copy-paste. And then here we have additional, not exact copy-pasting, because they did change a few words around up until the end of here. So this is here. There's a lot the same. Copy-paste and then some, some mostly the same. And it then it continues through here, and then we have some different text. And then it starts again, migration and skirmishing. So we do have some copy-paste here with, you know, some different sentences changed around and, and, and stuff like that. Again, and it continues through some of the, the rest of the write-up here is then we have a lot of copy-paste here. And they did change some stuff here to bring, a, bring information about the spell play. But this wasn't a large write-up. Let's talk about the map here real quick, and we'll get back to the write-up. So here's the, the two maps. Let's get them centered here so you can see them. As you can see, this one is much more colorful. And there's a lot more to this map than there is to this map. What we're seeing is basically the same. This map is rather, you know, dull, right? you know, but, and this one is, is rather nice. My biggest gripe about the map is some of these towns and thorps and keeps and stuff like that and inns, the words are so tiny, and I wear good glasses. The words are so tiny that you literally need a magnifying glass to see them. That's my only gripe. I mean, I understand that they can't, they couldn't put, they couldn't do a fold-out map because, of course, this isn't Wizards of the Coast. I would have loved to have seen a fold-out map. Uh, that would have been really great. The map is beautiful. You know, let's let's not take take anything away from that. Compared to this, this map is amazing. But the words are just very, very small in here. There's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of, of uh, mix-ups in here, like um, Gallard is listed as a small town in the book, but as a small city on the map. So you have one or two small things with that there. All right, so let's get back to the uh, write-ups here. Now, this was a decent, a, a good-sized write-up. It has a lot more information in it. And so what, basically what they did was they took the information here, and they copy-pasted some of it, and then they updated the rest of it uh, to 5th edition with information about the Sundering and the Spell Plague. We have here a town map, which we don't, unfortunately, get in that book. And this continues on for a few pages, and it's stop how to rule, and that's the end of it. All right, let's, take, let's talk about uh, what else is in this book. We'll do a flip through while I'm talking. First off, this book, you know, I mentioned the artwork before. I love this. This is a beautiful piece of work. I, I'm not a big fan of the Clark Gable Elminster. Uh, I like the old wizard hat Elminster better uh, with a long beard. I know. He's, oh, he looks just like Gandalf. No, but I, I did. I preferred that Elminster over, over Clark here, but, you know, times change. I would have liked to have seen 
uh, a new piece of art for Elminster, but maybe I don't know what licensing, non-disclosure, or whatever it, you know issue is between uh, Ed and Alex and uh, Wizards of the Coast. Maybe they had to use this piece of artwork. I don't know. Or maybe they just liked it better. But I would have preferred to see something new, you know, a new, a new Elminster picture. Okay, so this book, though, this took me right back to uh, second edition. I love second edition. It's what I grew up with. Actually, I started with first, first edition uh, when I was a teenager. And then when in my early 20s, I switched over and I was a second edition baby ever since. And I love it. I did dabble some into third edition. Uh, fourth edition, I did not touch. I cannot stand. Uh, personal opinion, I'm not here to start a edition war. And of course, then there's uh, fifth edition. And there are some good things about fifth edition, don't get me wrong. Uh, I just prefer my personal preferences to play second edition. So, But this, this book has a lot, a lot of information in it, a lot of background information in it, a lot of adventure hooks in it. Uh, information pertaining to uh, the inns, the taverns, merchants. All right, what this book reminded me of, um, especially uh, second edition, is, yes, the Volos Guides. The Volos Guides had a lot of information, just like this does, a lot of background. It did have um, the addition of maps, which this one is unfortunately a little lacking in, except for the, the great front map again. I uh, wish it could have been pulled out, but... It is what it is. It had here some city maps and town maps. Okay, and as well as more description. I mean, they, they don't give as much description as would have been in a Volo's Guide about the taverns and the inns and, and the merchants. There is some, uh, but not as much as, of course, there would have been in one of these. Also, I have to say, Ed, I miss the recipes. Ed would write up the most amazing recipes in here, and not a lot, but each book had a couple of recipes in it. And they would really bring you in there. It would really make you feel like you were sitting there in that tavern, eating that food. You could almost taste that food by reading the recipes in this book. All right, the other thing this book uh, doesn't have, even though it does mention um, a lot of players uh, in here, various wizards and power people, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera. What this book doesn't have is, is stats. It's very crunch free. There's not a lot of crunch in here at all. There's a small, there's a, there's, a, there's a chapter here. The last chapter in the book is on player backgrounds, which I really enjoyed. And there's just a couple of pages on campaigns in the border kingdoms, but otherwise, which is also is more background history and some stories that you can like, they're like, like the, the backgrounds of adventures that you can do. This I absolutely love. That's a beautiful green dragon. But uh, there is no crunch in here. But that's another thing that, gets, uh, that makes this great because you can take this book and you can drop it anywhere. That is the true beauty of this book. Is you can drop this book anywhere, be it the Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk, uh, Mistara, Pathfinder, anything anywhere in Pathfinder, first, second, third, fourth ugh, and fifth edition you can put this book in there with very minimal change very minimal change you can put this book anywhere you could probably even though i have not read the books you know you can scream at me if you want but uh if i'm wrong but you could probably even drop this into room quest in Glorantia. just pick an area drop it in there pick a city Drop it in there. Pick a realm. Drop it in there. Anywhere. Bah, bah, over here. North, south, equal. Anywhere. A lot of this is, is coastal. But of course you can change that. The city doesn't have to be on the coast. They, instead of fishing, they can do something else. But, you know, there's plenty of coastline along the Forgotten Realms and along Greyhawk and, and along uh, any, of the, any of the realms, any of the areas that, that I spoke of. Plenty of. Plenty of space for everything in this book. So... Is highly recommended for that, just based on, on, on that fact that it's information that you can put absolutely anywhere in any game and enjoy it. You don't have to be in the Forgotten Realms. You don't have to be in, in play Dungeons and Dragons. You can be playing Pathfinder or, 
or RuneQuest or, or some other, or your own home brew campaign or your own home brew uh, fantasy setting or system. Well, that red wizard. So again, there's tons of hooks in here, tons of information. This is basically a campaign guide, whereas, you know, something like Salt Marsh, it had a little bit of background information on Salt Marsh, but it was basically an adventure. So this is the, the, the campaign guide in the box set. What we're missing here is we're missing the adventure guide and we're missing the monster sheets. And of course, there aren't any, um, there aren't any spells or new spells or magic items. And you know, you can say, Michael, there's a ton of stuff on the DMs Guild. I know, but there is a ton of stuff on DMs Guild. And I know they were probably limited in space and exactly what they wanted to do, but I would have enjoyed seeing some new magic spells or some new magic items. But again, perhaps, and I don't know for sure, perhaps they were limited in what they could do via what Wizards of the Coast told them they could do. Or, or maybe not. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. But I would have liked to have seen that. Would like to have seen the monsters. Would have liked to have seen the spells and magic. All right. The other thing I'd like to mention is there, um, like here in uh, Middle Muskshire, there's mentioned uh, a couple of ballads. And I believe in the Volos guys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ed did include some songs in there, some of the ballads in there. And I would have liked to have seen that in here as well. So I know everything can't be Volos guy because this is not a Volos guy. But I'm just mentioning some of the stuff that I'm missing to give a review, you know, a review of what is and is not in this book. Okay. So on to uh, typos. There's a little bit of typos in here. Um, go back here to page 62. We have, uh, they did a lot of this, a lot, not a lot, well, yeah, in every write-up there's a lot of information that's in parentheses. And here, for instance, we have one close parenthesis here. We have here, a long bitter battle ensued, ending in death for the eye tyrant, its prowling servitor monsters, with a parenthesis, close parenthesis, but there's no open parenthesis. There's a close parenthesis before that. So that's a little whoopsie right there. Um, we have, and then here, up here, um, page 64, where Middle Muskshar is, again, since we was, I mentioned the ballads, we have four any that's together. Okay, so, and a visitor, visitor will search in, in vain for any together, proper settlements, or even any. All right, so uh, I'll get one more. There's, there's a few in here that I picked, and it's just, I'm not, not trying to nitpick or anything, but it's just stuff that my eye catches when I'm reading. Okay, page 75 here, where we're talking about um, Backle Blade. Let's see if I can get this close up here. You can see it's spelled correctly here. Blackle Blade. And then right down here, we have Blackle Blide, because we have an I here, capital I instead of, instead of an L. So, a couple typos here. And then we have another one here in 81. Okay, and here we also have, if you look at right here, and this will also occur, and we have an IG, which is, I'm, I'm sure it was supposed to be an IN for in any. And the last one I'll show you here, 86. Okay. And the last one here, page 86, and I'll show you this one with the... We have a uh, closed parenthesis here. We have our text here. And then up here, we have Shatter to the Keep's Main Tower. Closed parenthesis, but we don't have any beginning uh, parenthesis here in this text. Okay, and the last one I'm going to point out. I know I said that before. <laughs> but the last one I'm going to point out here is that, uh, which, speaking of... The Mesmora. Iron Drake's badge, and we can see here that we have uh, her badge is a copper-hued ring seen on side, a thick circle, that has three fangs depending uh, from its upper inner arc. So I'm, I'm sure that was supposed to be descending from its upper inner arc. So, uh, the only other thing is uh, on the map, Telechar. And we're going to show you right here. I'm going to say, Mike, get over it. Get over the damn... <laughs> get 
get over the damn spellings. Okay, Tyler Charn is here. Uh, and or here on the map. Let me show you here up close. We have right here, Tyler Chard with a D. So a lot of these realms, people with their heralds, or in this case with uh, Soldama, we have uh, it has a blazon. And it describes it, you know, it describes it, or Alex describes it, exactly what the herald or blazon or flag is. And I kind of, I would have liked to have seen that even if it was small, you know, in this area here or maybe up over here next to the name. But like I said, I'm sure this could have very well been a money issue. Uh, having to pay, a bunch, you know, an artist to, to actually paint all those up. Okay, now... After we get the uh, we get all the great information we have over here, and again, there's just a ton of it. We get to the backgrounds, and there's several different backgrounds, several different pages of backgrounds here from different areas. Again, the artwork, love it, and each one lists out the skills, languages, tool proficiencies, equipment. We have features, we have suggested characteristics, which are here. We have personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, which I love. And uh, uh, I believe it was Alex who wrote the backgrounds. And he does some funny ones. He actually throws in, you know, you're reading them and you're, you're kind of seriously thinking, what can my character do? Then you come across of I'm Afraid of the Dark, which, you know, just kind of cracked me up. And you'll have uh, some other bathing is for dandies and soft city folk. Uh, I loathe cheese and cannot stand to be near it. I mean, that's just, you know, little stuff like that that really cracked me up. I thought it was, I, I enjoyed reading it and I enjoyed, I would use these backgrounds. See, that's the other thing. You can use these backgrounds no matter what edition you play. You can use these backgrounds. Each character needs a background, no matter what edition you play. And that's, again, going back to the real beauty of this book is it's, it's can be used in any edition. Now we have some, uh, just some hidden and found items that you, little trinkets and stuff like that that you can find that really aren't, you know, magical or anything like that. And then, you know, that's the end of it. So, in closing, go ahead and get this book. If you're a role player and you enjoy role fantasy, high fantasy role playing, even low fantasy role playing, uh, this is the one to get. This is the one that's going to, you know, especially if you love to write your own adventures. Of course, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of adventures now written up on the Border Kingdoms uh, through DMs Guild, which you can easily go and download. Again, you know, scream at me in the... Uh, comments, but I am a book guy. PDFs don't really do anything for me. I'm a book guy. I love to collect uh, my role-playing games and books, and that's what I do. I don't have an overly large collection. A lot of it, I actually had everything from second edition. I mean, everything except for, except for, what did I have from second? I had Planescape. I had Alcadim. I had, oh, I had Ravenloft. I had, you know, I had most everything. Now I just Mostly I have the Forgotten Realms, so I've sold all the rest of it off. Which is why I constantly bug Alex Cameron on Twitter to share his, share one of his two sealed copies of product with me. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and buy it. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. If you, if you don't want to get the book, get the PDF. Whichever the case it is, it's well worth the money. All right, that's all I have. I want to thank uh, my 5% viewers and everybody out there. You stay safe and have a great day.